It's the Southeastern Conference Basketball Tournament. Live from the Civic Center in Birmingham, Alabama. Tonight's championship game, Kentucky versus Tennessee. And a very pleasant good evening to you. Here in Birmingham, it has been raining all day. Tonight, we expect basketballs to be raining through the hoops here. Jay Randolph to call the play-by-play -play of the SEC final tonight alongside the former Duke All-American who will analyze the action for us, Jeff Mullins, and courtside. Our good friend from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, a gentleman who will be analyzing for us down there, John Ferguson. Tonight, Kentucky, the Wildcats, and Tennessee going at it for the championship. It has been the first renewal of this tournament in 27 years. It has been something very special, a happening. It certainly has, Jay. Three days ago, we had 10 teams in this tournament. Now we're down to two, Kentucky and Tennessee. Kentucky, a young team, finished sixth during the regular season, but they've played remarkably well, despite the fact they've played four games in six days, despite the fact they had a key injury last night to Dwight Anderson, despite the fact they only have eight scholarship athletes, they're in the final game. Tennessee, on the other hand, showed what they were made of last night. They came into the tournament with a six-game win streak, a second-place finish, and a bye, and last night they beat a stubborn Auburn team. We've got our ball game tonight. Right now, down on the court, the color guard is coming on to the floor here at the Civic Center in Birmingham, Alabama. Our pregame ceremonies are getting underway, and with you, we'll join and watch these opening ceremonies. Two outstanding teams playing for the championship here tonight. Jay Randolph along with Jeff Mullins with you. Hope you're going to enjoy it wherever you are. Some outstanding individuals, Jeff, in this tournament. Yes, we do, and we have some interesting matchups. At the forward position, Chuck Verderber will be guarded by Carter tonight, who uh, Verderber will have about four inches, I look, perhaps, for Kentucky to maybe take advantage of that. On the other hand, defensively, Tennessee will match Crosby up against the hot Kyle Macy. Crosby's a strong player, has done a good job on Kyle in the past, so those are two very interesting matchups. The starting lineups for tonight's championship game. First of all, for Kentucky, number 34, 6'6", freshman Chuck Bederber. For Tennessee, number 25, 6'4", senior Terry Crosby. For Kentucky, number 52, 6'6", junior LaVon Williams. Number 32 for Tennessee, 6'9", junior Reggie Johnson. Number 40 for Kentucky, 6'8", sophomore Fred Cowan. Number 44 for Tennessee, 6'7", sophomore Howard Wood. For Kentucky, number 22, 6'1", senior Truman Clater. Number 10 for Tennessee, 6'3", junior Bert Bertelkamp. For Kentucky, number 4, a junior 6'3", Kyle Macy. And for Tennessee, number 30, 6'3", freshman Gary Carter. The coaches for Kentucky, Joe B. Hall. For Tennessee, Don DeVoe. Ladies and gentlemen, tossing out the ball for the first championship game of the Southeastern Conference Basketball Tournament in 27 years is Georgia Athletic Director Joel Eves. Not only did Eves play in the Southeast Conference while a three-sport athletic man at Auburn, he later coached in the Southeastern Conference Tournament. He's a member of the Sports Hall of Fame in both Alabama and Georgia. 
In addition, he brought the first Mideast Regional Playoffs as well as the NCAA Basketball Finals to the Deep South, and he's received the National Association of Basketball Coaches National Award for his contributions to basketball. Joe Leaves, there you see him along the center stripe. A great gentleman, and we are awaiting the toss of the ball as these two teams come out. He passes that ball out to Paul Galvin, one of our three officials who comes in and shakes hands with him. This has been quite a week of basketball. After 27 years, this tournament being renewed, we have two outstanding teams, and we are ready to go. Jay, as we approach the toss, one thing to consider again tonight is this Kentucky team has played four in a row. Fatigue will have to be a factor. Look for Tennessee to up the tempo of this game. Reggie Johnson will jump for Tennessee. Fred Cowan for Kentucky. We're underway. Ball belongs to Tennessee. The other officials, you saw Paul Galvan, are Don Shea and Ben Dunn. Tennessee 19 and 11, Kentucky 19 and 10. This is Bertelkamp. Kentucky opening in a man-to-man defense tonight. Shot put up by Terry Crosby. Rebounded away by Williams. Here is Plater for Kentucky. The Wildcats will go left to right here in the first half. The third night in a row, they're playing in their dark blue road uniforms. Macy. This is Plater. Plater gets it away. Truman Plater starting right where he left off in this tournament, shooting the outside shot. Getting the first two for Kentucky. Plater has scored 57 points in three games. Add two to that. He now has 59. Wood in underneath for Tennessee. Tapped up. Terry Crosby. Exactly what Kentucky coach Joe Hall doesn't want to happen. What a great layup. The freshman, Herderber, missing the layup as he went in underneath. Very alert play by the Kentucky team. Berderber had a good layup, just laid it up a little bit too strong. Missed the basket. It'll be Kentucky's ball. No foul on the play. There was a little contact there. Plater getting it out. Cowan off to Macy. Macy banks it up, and he's fouled. Macy fouled by Wood. Or was it called? Macy was called for the offensive foul. Foul on Mason. Driving into that middle area, he got a little bit out of control. Joe Hall, 50 years old, Cynthiana, Kentucky is home. Shot put up and underneath by Gary Carter, and a foul call. Before the game, I had occasion to talk to Coach Don DeVoe of Tennessee, and he said it's very important for Tennessee to win the battle of the boards. That time, they were called going over the back, trying to get to the offensive boards. Reggie Johnson charged for the foul. Kyle Macy on the move. Fred Herbert gives it back to Macy, and a try for the steal. Matchup early in this game, as we mentioned. Gary Crosby, strong player guarding Kyle Macy, a quick guard. Going to be very key in this game how these two players get off early. Plater getting it out. Plater guarded by Bertelkamp and a foul on Bertelkamp. The other interesting matchup, matchup as we talked in the open has. Gary Carter guarding Chuck Verderber. Verderber about 6'6 and a half. Carter 6'3. So Kentucky may try to take advantage of that mismatch. Hurdle Camp patting it out of bounds. Kentucky being very deliberate on offense, taking their time. They don't want this team to get out of control. Pass into Cowan for two. Beautiful play. Sideline out of bounds play. A back pick on Cowan's man. Cowan got the high lob and a dunk. Two more for Kentucky. Bertelkamp on the move against Macy. Macy kicked the ball. It'll belong to Tennessee. We're in the opening moments here. The championship game, the NCAA bid goes to the winner. 
I think Tennessee may be surprised by this man-to-man -man defense. I saw them practice today, and they were practicing primarily against the zone, knowing that Kentucky played almost zone almost exclusively last night. Hurdle Camp making a good move. The fallaway jumper is off, and it is Macy for Kentucky. Macy along past the Clater. Clater's 20-footer. Crosby. Crosby working against Spinnerber. Off to Myrtle Camp. Banks it up. Nice play. They work well on that one. Good two-on-two two play. Alert pass by Crosby. Nice shot by Myrtle Camp. 6-4 Kentucky. We played almost three minutes of this first half. LeVon Williams getting it out to Bederber. Off to Clater. Banks it up and in. Clater has six points here in the early goal. Three for three from the floor. All from the outside. They warm to their task, Tennessee and Kentucky. Kirk Bertelkamp out front. Kentucky back in the zone now, changing their defense. That's Crosby for the balls. Tough shooting in and out. Minerva rebounded, lost it, a foul. On number 32 of Tennessee, Reggie Johnson. That is his second. Fouls could be very important, obviously. That is a factor in any game, but when you're down to the nub, it's really rough. In one of the Tennessee-Kentucky games this year, Johnson got in foul trouble very early and only played about 15 minutes. However, Tennessee still won, but it is a key factor. Pass goes into Cowan. Out to Clater. Clater's in trouble. Got it into LeVon Williams, and a foul called in the lane. That's the fourth team foul against Tennessee. It is charged to Carter. That's his first. We have 16.25 to play. We're in the first half with Jeff Mullins. This is Jay Randolph at the Civic Center in Birmingham. SEC final. Baderber, the freshman, trying to make a move, is fouled by Howard Wood. That's number one on Wood. Again, they called an offensive foul on Baderber that time, and Coach Joe Hall was asking a question about that. Verderber I had to question it, too. I thought, sure, the foul was on Wood, but Verderber commits his first. Team foul number two against Kentucky. Kentucky back in that 1-3-1 one, one that worked so effectively last night for them. Carter shooting and hitting. Gary Carter. He's just a freshman from Johnson City, Tennessee. He has his first field goal. It's 8-6 Kentucky. thus far in the tournament, scoring 29 points, but at key times. Howard Wood with a turnaround jumper. Wood has his first field goal. We're going to have a timeout. We have 15, 33 left to play in this first half. The Wildcats on top of Tennessee here, 10 to 8. This telecast is presented by authority of the Southeastern Conference and the C.D. Chesley Company. Any use of this program without the written consent of the Chesley Company prohibited. The announcers on this program have been approved and contracted for by the C.D. Chesley Company. Kentucky, Jeff, shooting 83% in the early going, hitting 5 out of 6. Tennessee, 4 out of 9 for 45%. And the Wildcats have really been going good in their shooting here in this tournament. down the left-hand side of the floor. His patented move in this tournament looked like he might isolate himself with Crosby one-on-one. -on -one. Crosby reached in, called for the foul before and, the shot. And it is the first on Crosby and the 15 foul against Tennessee. Kentucky has hit 100 out of 165 field goals in three games, and they're really hot. That's Clater again. Clater now with eight points. Excellent one-on-one -on -one move by Clater. They had isolated that side of the floor. He had confidence. He made the shot. LeVon Williams patted it away. Macy comes back. Off it goes. Up and in. Brett Allen has six points. 14 to eight. Kyle Macy has yet to score a point, but we see how valuable he is just in his leadership for this Kentucky team. 
Myrtle Camp trying to settle the Volunteers down just a bit. Lost out of bounds by Carter. 14 minutes and 46 seconds left to play. We're in the first half here. Kentucky didn't stay in that man-to-man -man defense very long. Carter puts it up. Carter has four points. Carter and Crosby, Jay, are the two key for Tennessee against the zone. They're their good outside shooters. Last night, they did a good job at it. Herderber, the freshman, getting it back out to Cowan. Off the plater. Cowan to Clayton. Clayton, shovel shot. The ball. Williams tapping it in. Williams has his first field goal. Excellent follow up by Lamont Williams. Very alert play. Later drove to the basket, threw the defensive man to him. Williams took up the shot and tipped it in. 16 to 10. Kentucky by half a dozen. Crosby. Crosby has four. These two clubs coming out hot. Yes, they are. And Crosby and Carter picking up where they left off last night, hitting the outside shot. Macy getting it to Verderber. Off to Clater. Clater driving against Bertle Camp is foul. A foul on Bertle Camp. His second. Not a great shot by Clater that time, but he's got his confidence. He felt like he could go up. Bertle Camp was all over him. However, he landed on him as he went up to block the shot. Truman Clater, the senior from Toledo, Ohio, born in Ashland, Kentucky. Shooting two. 74.4 percent free throw shooter, averaging 7.9 a game. He was 9 for 9 in the second half against Alabama in Kentucky's 101-100 victory. That was a great shooting exhibition. None of those were layups. Another interesting thing thus far in the game, Reggie Johnson has yet to touch the ball for the University of Tennessee. Kentucky doing a good job defensively keeping the ball away from him. Trying to get it in underneath to Reggie Johnson, and Kentucky coming away again. That is two turnovers against Tennessee. 13 minutes and 10 seconds to play in the first half. Kentucky leading 18 to 12. Ball went out of bounds off Crosby. There is Dwight Anderson, the brilliant freshman for Kentucky, who is out of action with that broken left wrist. He did it just 23 seconds into the game here last night. Later missing. Tennessee on the run. Underneath, Reggie Johnson. He got it to Reggie that time, Jeff. That on the end of the semi-fast break. Great pass by Carter into Johnson, and he stuffed it home. Macy from 20. Macy gets it back. Rebound to Howard Wood of Tennessee, covering up. 12 and a half to play in the first half. Fertile can. That shot put up by Crosby. Excellent follow-up by Carter. He was in the right place at the right time, showed what a great athlete he is, staying up in the air and laying it in the basket. Carter will be a very important cog if Tennessee is to win this game. 18 to 16. The balls have come back. Cowan goes to the hoop. What a fine tournament he has had, and he plays with it facing the basket so well, driving to the hoop time after time. Myrtle Camp. Oh, last night he missed four shots from the field, but he looked good there. Joe Hall yelling out to his Wildcats. Score 20 to 18, Kentucky by two. Myrtle Camp has four points. Basket is good. The call against Verderber. Excellent backdoor pass by Macy. Verderber called for the charge after the shot. The basket is good. Timeout here in Birmingham, Alabama. 11:34 left to play in the first half. Kentucky 22, Tennessee 18. In front of the Tennessee bench, Howard Wood has just been replaced. Uh, Coach DeVoe told me that he has been suffering from a bronchial problem and is having trouble breathing and is also a little ill, maybe. 
Thank you, John. And into the game is number 31, Chuck Threets, the junior from Lackawanna, New York, to take over. Kentucky is 10 out of 16 from the floor. Tennessee, 9 of 14. Kentucky leading by four, 22 to 18. That last foul on Verderber was his second. Kentucky doesn't have a lot of depth up front, so they have to be careful with their big man. Crosby putting it up. Ball out of bounds. Belongs to Tennessee. Out to Bertelkamp. Jump shot from the left side by Carter. Rebounded by Threets. Threets scores. He just came there, as we told you. Gets his first field goal there. He didn't wait very long to get into the action. Good offensive rebound. Good follow-up. 22 to 20. Kentucky by two. Foul as Bertelkamp and Plater made contact. That is the seventh team foul against Tennessee with 10.57 left to play in this first half. Definitely a factor in this first half. And that time, Plater was trying to post up down low. Bertelkamp kind of nudged him out of bounds. The official was alert and saw the foul. Tennessee, Johnny Dark number 24. The one and one will be in effect. I thought it was going to be Clater to shoot it. It will be. They apparently Clater had not realized that was the 17 foul. Now Scheidler is into the lineup for the Wildcats to replace Kyle Macy. Jay Scheidler, number 25, a junior from Lawrenceville, Illinois. And here is Clater. 11 points now for Truman. Kyle Macy is 0 for 2 for the floor. Nothing to get riled up about for the Kentucky fans, but he is having to work a little bit harder tonight because of the defense of Terry Crosby, and I think Coach Joe Hall wants to give him a rest. Clater's two free throws. Make it 24-20, Kentucky. Shot up and out of there. And finally taken by Kentucky. That was Reggie Johnson who had the tough go there on the in and out shot. Here is Scheidler back for the Wildcats off the TC. Truman Clater. Now into Clater. Clater, that high arching shot. Comes off. Carter with the rebound. Carter takes the jumper. Yes. Excellent foul. Break. He pulled up at the just outside the free throw line. Didn't see anybody open under the basket. Played it up soft and in. Eight points for Carter. Truman Plater off the Cowan. A foul charge to Crosby. That's two on Crosby. We're at the midway point of this first half. Crosby is an excellent defensive player, Jay. And one of the things the Kentucky team is trying to do is rub him off. Pick him good and solid and try and free the man that he's guarding, whether it be Macy or Clater. That time they did a good job of it. He was called for the foul. Cowan now has nine points. A sophomore out of Union County High School in Sturgis, Kentucky. A quick forward. Very strong young man. Kentucky playing without a legitimate center. He's sometimes a center, sometimes a forward because they're shuffling forwards into the center position. Kentucky's lead is four, 26-22. Johnny Darden getting it across to Carter. Carter comes up short. Scheidler rebounding. Three on three break. Scheidler stops, pumps for 20. Comes up short. Foul, Cowan, Kentucky. His first. That was a good shot by Scheidler. That's his shot. He saw the opportunity, took it. He's just in the game, just a little bit short. On the foul, Cowan going aggressively to the offensive board was caught reaching over the back. Good call by the official. He did get the wrist. You saw number 35, Clarence Tillman, out of Philadelphia, the freshman into the game for Kentucky. He's working with Bederber, Williams, Scheidler, and Plater. Nine and a half minutes to play, first half. In heavy traffic, get underneath. Reggie Johnson, does the basket count or not? Let's see if the basket is good. It is. Four points for Reggie. And the foul call also. A chance for the three-point play. 
Foul the, charge to Clater. The official looked at the other official to see if the basket went in. Excellent move by Johnson. He was trapped with three men around him, but Clater got him on the wrist as he went up. Reggie Johnson, leading scorer, leading field goal shooter, leading rebounder. Cedar Grove High School, Ellenwood, Georgia. Tillman rebounding out to Scheidler. Kentucky up by two, 26-24. Tillman giving it off to Clater. Clater from 20. Kentucky not shooting as well from the outside with Clater and Macy here in the early going. Underneath. That was Reggie Johnson. The basket is good. The foul is called on Johnson. It is his third. We see Gordon Nash Bass getting up. Here comes Nash very quickly. Don DeVoe doesn't want to take any chances with his big guy. An important basket for Tennessee, but also a very important foul. Johnson goes out with three fouls. Nash has had an ankle injury coming back off of it. Kevin Nash, 43, a hustler. Trenton, Michigan, 6'10", sophomore. Plater on the free throw line, one and one. Score tied at 26. Kentucky doing a great job at the free throw line. Very important now. Tennessee with over seven fouls. Kentucky will be shooting each time. Kentucky came in here hitting 63 out of 89 in the three tournament games. Kentucky back on top by two. Johnny Darden. Carter back to Darden. Kentucky still in the 1-3-1 zone. Shot was put up by Threets, and he missed the tough layup there. Here is Plater. Plater is fouled. Kyle Macy will be coming back into this ball game in a moment. I think he's going to replace Plater, though. That was a good break for Kentucky on that play. Plater was a little bit out of control. Tennessee had done a good job trapping him, but Threets came along from behind and ran him over. Good call by the official. Good break for the Kentucky team. Joe Hall talking things over with the freshman Chuck Verderber. Hall, 50 years old. This might be the finest coaching job of his career. His club has really come on. Kentucky is 8 out of 8 from the free throw line. 9 out of 9. points here in the first half. He comes out of the lineup, and Kyle Macy comes back in. Very important notice there, Jay, that what the free throw can do. Clater had missed his last five shots, but he's got four straight points at the free throw line, and he's kept Kentucky alive. Johnny Darden. Darden to Carter, back to Darden. Back to Carter for the jumper. He got it. Terry Crosby, excuse me, I said Carter. Six points for Crosby. 30 to 28, Kentucky. Scheidler hits it. His first field goal. Scheidler is the freshest of the Kentucky guards, playing not quite as many minutes as Macy or Plater. It'd be key for this game if he could get the hot hand. Darden out front, back to Terry Crosby, back to Darden. Trying to penetrate that zone. This is Carter. Darden now going up the middle with one. Rebound battle for saved by Nash. Up underneath. Put up. Chuck Threets has four points. 32 to 30. Kentucky by two. Seven and a half minutes to go in this first half. Macy back to Bederber for the jumper. Bederber can do it inside or outside. That's his first field goal. That a time, very poised freshman he is. That time Tennessee tried to double team Macy. When they did, they got in trouble. They hit the open hand. Nash with an excellent move there. Nash has his first field goal. 34 to 32 Kentucky, and they're going here. Seen a lot of offense in this first half.
basket counts. Bederber on the charge. Back into the lineup, Fred Cowan for Kentucky. And Bederber's going to have to sit it out. He has three. All three of them offensive fouls, I think, Jet. Two of them he scored, one he didn't, but driving to the basket. Six minutes, 54 seconds left to play here in the first half. Here's some first round scores as we started here on Wednesday. Alabama over Florida and Kentucky beating Mississippi. Georgia got by Mississippi State. Auburn over Vanderbilt. Then we moved into the second round. Kentucky and Alabama played a tremendous game. One for the Wildcats by one. Auburn over Georgia. And last night, it was Tennessee over Auburn and Kentucky over LSU. LSU had been the number one seed in this tournament, the regular season conference champion. Kentucky 36, Tennessee 32. Jumper put up by Terry Crosby. Rebound taken by Kyle Macy. Macy back to the attack for the Wildcats. Kentucky still with a three forward offense, bringing Tillman in for Verderber. Electing right now to go with the two guard offense. Shot by Cowan. Rebounded by Nash. He takes up a lot of room in there. Here's Darden. Johnny Darden. Underneath. The shot goes up by Threes. He is fouled. Foul is on Cowan. His second. And Threes is going to go to the line. Excellent inside pass by Johnny Darden. Penetrating into that free throw lane. Kentucky, 6-2, a senior, co-captain, Morganfield, Kentucky, into the lineup. LeVon Williams coming out, so it is Tillman, Cowan, Scheidler, Macy, and Casey. Three hits the free throw. He took over for Nash and has been playing very well. Now Nash and Threets are both in there. Rebound, Tillman out to Scheidler. Six minutes to play in the first half. 6-33, Kentucky. Tillman guarded by Nash. A lot of contact there. Tillman getting it back. Tillman hits it. Excellent outside shot by the freshman. He's a great outside shooter. He's played very well for Kentucky in this tournament. That's the first points for Tillman. 38-33, five-point lead. They tried to get it in underneath the bridge. Take it away. Here comes Kentucky. Macy with a fake. His first field goal and the first points of the game for Macy. Classic Kyle Macy move. Under control, fakes the man off his feet, goes up for an unbalanced jump shot. The Big Blue are up by seven. This is Freaks. In the lane there. Carter. Put it up, foul. Foul is charged. for Kentucky. Cowan coming out. It is Cowan out of the lineup. Tillman, Scheidler, Casey, Plater, and Macy going for Kentucky. Joe Hall's really upset about something. Hall going to the scores table below. Seventh year at Kentucky, 154 victories, 52 defeats. I think he thinks somebody else should be shooting instead of Carter, one of their better free throw shooters. Carter gets two points. He has 10 in the game. 40 to 35, Kentucky. Five minutes to play in this first half. And Coach Hall is being told to sit down. He's about to draw himself a technical. Kentucky now with four guards in there and a freshman Clarence Tillman. Look for them to use their speed and quickness and nurse their lead a little bit, hold on to the ball, stay in control of the game. It'll be on Darden. Macy showed that he 
still has some quickness in his legs after four games. He got to that corner, saw that hole down the middle, and boy, did he explode to that basket and draw the foul. Kyle Macy, an All-American. That last foul was charged to Darden. Three points for Macy, and Kentucky really getting the job done at the strike. And this is their best free throw shooter on the year. The Southeastern Conference number one free throw shooter, better than 86% for the season. One of the best in the nation, considering the amount of play. 42-37, Kentucky. Nash for the Volunteers. Out to Darden. Terry Crosby. Crosby and Carter working it against the zone. 4-10 to go in this first half. The Kentucky fans yelling defense. Nash underneath. Coupling for it. Jump ball. Tillman. And Gary Carter will jump. It. That time we could see how mismatched Kentucky is inside. Dwayne Casey, 6'4. Kevin Nash, 6'10, guarding each other in the zone defense. Howard Wood will come back into the lineup number 44 for Kentucky or for Tennessee. Controlling the tap, and Casey let it go. Casey made a mistake and let that ball go. Four. Coming up at halftime, we have a very interesting visual feature put together by our technical crew. The dunk is definitely back in college basketball, and you'll see that at halftime. This is Jay Randolph with Jeff Mullins here at the Civic Center in Birmingham, Alabama. The first annual renewal of the Southeastern Conference Tournament in 27 years. Kentucky and Tennessee vying for the title and the NCAA berth here. And what a tournament it's been, Jay. LeVon Williams now in for, for Kentucky. They've got two forwards in, three guards. Carter to put it in play, gets it out to Crosby, and now Johnny Darden. Back out to Darden. Carter from 20. Nice shooting by Carter. He has a dozen. 42-37, Kentucky. Jay Scheidler on the move. Casey. Three and a half minutes to play. Again with three guards in there. Kentucky going to their semi them if they get the good shot they'll take it but at the same time they'd like to use as much clock as they can keep their players as rested as they can and we're coming down to three minutes and ten seconds left in this first half Kentucky is led by as many as eight they lead now by five inside the three minute mark winning here last night, 80-67. Tennessee with a 75-64 win over Auburn last night. The big blue and the big orange playing for the title. Kentucky rises to play from a stack. Four men in the free throw lane area, the two guards down low, and the guards will interchange, take turns handling the ball. season is undefeated. They're 4-0. Tillman underneath with a turnaround jumper. Rebound. Later. Oh, he did a good job. What a strong rebound for the guard. He was up high by the rim, brought it down and put it back up strong. 18 points for Clayton. A very big first half for TC. Ball goes out of bounds. A turnover. That is only the fourth turnover for Tennessee. Kentucky with only one here in the first half. Very conservatively well-coached game so far. Neither team turning the ball over. Tennessee, however, with Kentucky in this freeze, doesn't want to turn the ball over. They need shots now before the half. 
34-37, Kentucky. A minute and 25 to play. Scheidler controlling the basketball for the Wildcats. shot of Joe Hall there. He tried to recruit you when he was at Regis College in Denver, didn't he? Yes, I remember him very well. A great fellow, a very persistent recruiter, and a fine coach. Second turnover in the game for Kentucky. Johnny Darden getting it around to Crosby. Darden with it. A minute and ten to play. left in this first half. Kentucky doing something very well in this 1-3-1 zone, using their hands. They, all the players have their hands up, waving their arms, trying to get hands in the passing lane. Nash trying to get it into Wood. He does. He missed the layup. And here comes Crater with 45 seconds left. That was a tough miss there. That was a big miss. Now if Kentucky can hold on, or get two more, they'll go to the dressing room at halftime in excellent shape. Scheidler with 25 seconds to play. Foul on Scheidler. Offensive foul. Scheidler has the toughest matchup in this little delay offense because he's got the small advantage that time he anticipated well was able to draw the charge now the volunteers have time to score and they could get back within five 20 seconds to go kentucky going to a man-to-man -man these last 16 seconds Dart getting it over to crosby back out to dark looks up at the clock 10 seconds Tapped up by Wood, no good. A foul called at the buzzer. A foul called at the buzzer. Or was it after the buzzer? It looked like the official called a foul, but he's saying no foul well, now. It was after the buzzer. So we come to halftime. Here at the Civic Center in Birmingham, it is Kentucky 44, Tennessee 37. Thank you, John Ferguson, very much. Dwight Anderson, maybe the fastest guard ever to play at Kentucky. Jeff, statistics on this first half. Kentucky continues to blister the basket. Again, 64% the first half. It's hitting six, over 60% for the whole tournament. 12 for 12 from the free throw line. Tennessee shooting pretty well, mainly Carter and Crosby from the outside against the zone. Rebounds equal, turnovers almost equal, four to three. Kentucky has three turnovers. And we're ready to go to the final scheduled 20 minutes of play. Kentucky 44, Tennessee 37. Cowan for Kentucky going up against Reggie Johnson. And it is Tennessee who'll go left to right here controlling in the start of the second half. Darton starts the second half along with Carter. Johnson, that's Streets, and this is Crosby. Crosby gets it right back. Out to Darton. Rebound taken down by LeVon Williams. And the foul charged to Crosby, his third. Yes, and a big foul because he's the guy that's dogging Kyle Macy. This may He may have to let up a little bit the defensive pressure. Both teams with two players with three fouls each now. Kentucky starting the second half with Macy, Cowan, Baderber, Williams, and Clayton. Kyle Macy. Clayton. Williams back to Clayton. Kentucky with the lead, being very patient. Macy, nice fake, double pump. Tapped up in underneath there.
Hamilton. I'm not sure who's going to jump. There's so many up and down there on the floor. We'll wait and see. I believe they're going to call it with Cowan and Carter. Cowan was the first one on the floor trying to get it. Carter came over his back and tied him up. Jeff, we should mention that LSU, a fine basketball team, winning the regular season, may have an opportunity for NCAA play, and a large bid might be coming their way tomorrow afternoon. That's sheer speculation on our part. Yes, they had an excellent regular season, and of course, winning the SEC regular cha season championship, so they are definitely a candidate. They were fifth ranked in the country. The tap is controlled by Kentucky. LeVon Williams up to Plater. Kentucky has played exceptional basketball since Big Chuck Alexina has opted to give it up. Here's Plater. Rebounded by Threats. Johnny Darden. Crosby out to Darden. Tennessee working very hard to get the ball into Reggie Johnson. That time, LeVon Williams called for the foul. It's his first. Reggie Johnson will go to the line. Fourth all-time scorer in Tennessee history. Tennessee averaging 78 points a game coming in here and shooting 70.5 as a team. We might mention that last night, both teams came out of the locker room ready to play tonight. They're both having a tough time getting started. Eight points for Reggie. 44 to 39, Kentucky by five. Macy bringing it down against Crosby. Off to Minerva and back to Macy. Macy from 25. against Kentucky. Reggie Johnson, a junior at 6'9", 76% free throw shooter. At 36 this year is his high against Georgia. He has 10 points. It's 44 to 41. Kentucky's lead cut to three. And Tennessee presses. Tennessee in a man-to-man -man press after the main free throw. Kentucky taking their time getting the ball. That's Plater. Kentucky a bit cold with their shooting. Here comes Crosby for Tennessee. The Volunteers can get back within one with a bucket here. Kentucky has had good shots. They just haven't been able to connect. Shot put up in the lane by Johnson. No good. It's on LeVon Williams, his second. Strong inside move by Johnson. He put up a strong shot, little, came out long on the rebound. He was there to get it back. LeVon Williams fighting for the ball, called for the foul. It has been Reggie Johnson who has really been tough in the clutch, in close for Tennessee. Darden getting it around to Carter. Carter's basket is good. Offensive foul on Carter, the basket counts. 14 points for Carter. That was an out-of-bounds play, similar to the one Kentucky runs. Double pick on the weak side for Carter. He took one step to the baseline, up strong. Good defensive position by the Kentucky player. There's Don DeVoe, 38-year-old native of Sabina, Ohio, played at Ohio State. The Kentucky lead is cut to one. Macy gets it out to Verderber. Off to Plater. Back to Minerva. He loses it. And going and scoring and getting the lead for Tennessee. Crosby. Kentucky has been outscored 8-0 at the start of this second half. Tennessee upping the defensive pressure. Kentucky has been stuck on 44, and here's a turnover, the fourth in the game. And the Wildcats, for the first time in this tournament, 
a little disorganized. Yes, they are. That time, Plater tried to bring the ball up the floor all by himself. 16-43 remaining to be played. Tennessee back in business. 45-44, they lead it. At the conclusion of tonight's game, five players to be selected for the Southeastern Conference All-Tournament team and Nike Shoes, one of our network sponsors, will contribute $1,000 in each player's name to the General Scholarship Fund at his university. Tennessee, up by one, has come back strong. We have played three and a half minutes of the second half, and Kentucky has not scored. And Coach Don DeVoe of Tennessee wants his team to try and bring Kentucky out of the man to man, out of the zone defense. They want to play against a man to man. First time they've had the lead, first time they've been able to do that. Joe Hall motioning to his troops where he wants them to come out. Joe staying in his own, but moving his own out a little bit farther, just trying to trap a little bit. Kentucky still looking for its first points of the second half. Tennessee still keeping the defensive pressure on, doing a little bit more double teaming, trying to wear down the Kentucky team. Cowan, out to Bederber. Truman Plater. Plater banking it up. Well, they went nearly seven minutes. 
minutes without a bucket. 20 points for Truman Plater. Kentucky back on top by one, 46-45. his second. Kentucky has been fortunate. Their fouls in the second half, they've committed five, but not against their key men who are in foul trouble. Cowan and Verderver. Two team fouls against Tennessee, five against Kentucky. Myrtle Camp. From the corner, Carter. Camp up and in. It looked like Reggie Johnson. No, it was Threets. Threets tapped it in. 47 to 46, Tennessee. 12 and a half minutes to play. Kyle Macy. Out to Clayton. his shot. That's what he needs to do. Macy with six points. Trader with a steal. Trader drives. Lost the ball. Long pass down to Crosby. Crosby hits it. That's a four-point play right there. Big play. A great steal by Trader. He went into the basket. Coach Joe Hall is hot. He thought his player was fouled. as the SEC tournament continues. Don DeVoe was an assistant to Bobby Knight up at Army. And he's talking to his club. Remember, you can relive the exciting 79 Southeastern Conference tournament for many years, obtaining your own copy of the official SEC program. It outlines the tournament history, scoring records, 96 pages of colorful basketball information. Right to Post Office Box 1979, Lexington, Kentucky, the zip code 40593. It's $3. There is Dwight Anderson looking on. Tennessee leads 49 to 48. Macy getting it into the Derber. Levon Williams, Truman Clater, and Fred Cowan out there for the Wildcats. Myrtle Camp, Crosby, Johnson, Carter, and Freets in the lineup for Tennessee. We're nearing the midway point of the second half. Cowan. Cowan from 15. Oh, nice shooting by Fred Cowan. That was the guard around play that Kentucky loves to run. That time it was Cowan's coming off the screen, shooting the 16-footer. Cowan has 12 points. 50 to 49, Kentucky. The lead now, shifting back and forth. Reggie Johnson put it up. It belongs to Tennessee. Tennessee has been very active on the on their offensive boards this second half. Kentucky's going to have to block out a little bit better and get some more help in there, get their guards in there to help on the rebound. Myrtle Camp. They get around to Carter. Back to Myrtle Camp and back to Carter. Kentucky in the zone. Carter in underneath. Nice has nine points. That's the way to attack that zone. Tennessee playing very well right now. Here's a pass to Clater. Clater driving down, put it up, and he is fouled. The basket is good. Chance for the three-point play. Clater now with 22 points. Clater got the ball. That time he went to the basket a little bit more under control. Planted that last step. Went straight up. He was fouled, and he's got a chance for a three-point play, and he has redeemed himself. A foul charge to Bertle Camp. Johnny Darton is going to come back in for Tennessee. Later. 22 points. A fine performance. Bertle Camp coming out. Truman Plater can put Kentucky up by two. He does. And the Wildcats have really been hot at the free throw line. Shooting well at the line the whole tournament. That's why they led the regular 
postseason conference as the best free throw shooter in the conference as a team. Crosby. Oh, yes. Crosby cuts the cords. A dozen for Crosby. The game is tied for the first time all night at 53. for Kentucky. Tennessee has committed five. Last night it was Crosby. Crosby that was the zone breaker the first half and he's getting his confidence from the outside. Kentucky should be careful. Tennessee with a chance to break the tie. Crosby rebounded by Vanderbilt, the freshman. Gets it out to Excellent defensive Cowan. by Darden. Cowan dribbling the ball over towards Clater. Continued to move and overran Darden for his fourth foul and a very big one. Fred Cowan with four personals. Kentucky, 16 fouls. Tennessee with three. Tillman will come back in number 35 for the Wildcats. The freshman, fine shooter out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania's West High School.
Seven minutes and 20 seconds to play. A little strategy by both coaches here. We're going to have a timeout with 7.16 remaining in regulation time. The winner gets the NCAA bid. They might speculate on the Nike All-Tournament team, Jeff. $1,000 going to the scholarship fund. Uh, Macy, Clater, Johnson, Crosby, King, you got some names you think well, of? Well, I think uh, Bobby Cadditch and Bubba Price played very well for their Auburn team throughout the tournament. Jay Scheidler into the Kentucky lineup. Scheidler, Tillman, Williams, Macy, and Vederber going for the Wildcats. It's going to be interesting to see if the strategy continues. Tennessee would like Kentucky to come out of that zone. Kentucky wants to stay in it. What will the coaches do? 7.15 to play. Tennessee by one at 55-54. Kentucky in a 2-3 zone matchup. It's kind of disguised as a man-to-man -man because they match up man-to-man, -man, but as soon as the ball shifts, they sag off into the matchup zone. Jeff, you know we have two great traditional rivals playing here, Tennessee and Kentucky. And Kentucky has dominated the SEC tournaments over the years, and Tennessee is second in domination. They've had some great clashes over the years, and it is indeed one of the finest rivalries in the Southeast. Tennessee 36 and 15 in Southeast Conference tournament play. Kentucky 60 and 6. Six minutes and 25 seconds to play. Tennessee very patient on offense. Don DeVoe apparently didn't want to get into a running match with Kentucky, but the game is close, so he's sitting on a one point lead for the most part right here.
foul charge to Carter. We're going to take a timeout, and we'll be back with more as the Southeastern Conference Tournament continues. I noticed here on the floor during that last uh, long possession by Tennessee that Tennessee is very cool, very calm, very collected. Uh, Kentucky, on the other hand, is patient and also a little jaded, a little physically tired, I think. And back to the play. All right, John, certainly these two clubs with pride and poise going to the wire here. I don't think, Jay, that Kentucky can afford to hold on to the ball. The Tennessee team is a little fresher. And I look for them to keep the pressure on them defensively. It'd be awful tough for Kentucky to freeze the clock down. But they will go only for one shot. Six team fouls now against Tennessee. So the one and one going into effect on the next Tennessee free throw. I meant to say they'll go only for the good shot. They want a good shot now. Cowan is out there playing with four fouls for Kentucky, along with Federber, Scheidler, Macy, and LeVon Williams. coming here for the freshman. A one and one in effect for both teams. Vaderber. Uh -huh. Amazing how the Kentucky players, Macy, Scheidler, Vaderber, all shoot their free throws a great deal alike. Score is tied at 55. Second time we've been tied. Kentucky is 15 out of 17 at the line. Tennessee holding the ball. Joe Hall on his feet. I still think he would like to trap whenever possible out front. Two and a half to play. Martin getting it over there to Crosby back out front. The turnover is the sixth against Tennessee. Two minutes and 12 seconds left to play. Clater is coming back into the lineup to replace Federber. Kentucky with a three-guard offense now. We may see them stall the ball out or use up some of this clock. If they can hold the ball, they'll be in control. We've had some really remarkable games in this tournament, and this is no exception. Scheidler doing a good job getting it back to Macy. Timeout, Kentucky. 2.05 remaining in regulation time. 55 all. We'll be back with more after this word from your local station as the SEC tournament continues. Macy to put it in play. Gets it to Cowan. Cowan to LeVon Williams. Inside of two minutes now. Truman Plater. Darden, Crosby, Carter, Threets, and Johnson in the lineup for Tennessee. This is Scheidler for Kentucky. Off to Macy. 1.40 to go. This is their stall offense where they want to use up the clock. Again, Scheidler has Darden on him. Once before, he did charge in this situation, so he'll have to be very careful. Darden has a quickness advantage. Scheidler with the ball, coming to 120 up to play. Kentucky's guards, excellent ball handlers, good dribblers, keep their head up. Kentucky playing their fourth game in four days. Tennessee their second in two nights. 55 all. One minute.
minute to play. In this offense, Kentucky likes their guards to handle it, but they bring their big men out as a release, as they did that time with Cowan. 50 seconds. Cowan off the Shidler. Kentucky. The Wildcats have the basketball. They're going to try to win it with a final shot. If they do win it, it will be their fourth, 14th Southeastern Conference tournament title. Tennessee won in 36, 41, and 43. They've been in the finals. This marks the eighth time for them. And Jay, here in the Birmingham Civic Center, I believe we're having some trouble with the clock. The coach is talking to the score. Two seconds went off the clock. It happened once before in the game, and they had to adjust it. You know, there was 15 seconds on the clock when I saw them start to call the timeout, and now we end up with 10. Now they put it back to 12. Don DeVoe right there was a starter at Ohio State after being a substitute on that great 62 team with Havlicek and Lucas. John Ferguson has a note courtside. Jay, I think the problem with the clock is that after timeout was called on the sidelines off to the timer's left, that the clock was allowed to run maybe two seconds, and it went off a little late. And I think that that's what the officials came in to tell the timer about, and so the correction of the clock has now been made. Well, we have an even dozen up there. Let's talk about the strategy for a moment. Coach Don DeVoe, I think he'll put pressure on the outlet pass, but he's telling his players, don't foul. Kentucky, a tough team to guard in the closing moments. Three great outside shooters, Shiler, Macy, Clater. Good inside men with Cowens and Williams. It will be Shidler's responsibility to put the ball in play. No, now they've decided it will be Cowan. And now Don DeVoe wants a timeout. He wanted to take a look at what they were doing, and now he wants to talk it over with his folks. Tennessee coming in here tonight with 19 victories and 11 defeats. The Wildcats, 19 and 10. Kentucky and Tennessee giving us just a superb finish to what has been a dynamite few days of basketball. And Don DeVoe is a, and his assistants trying to decipher the Kentucky offensive pattern, trying to decide what they were going to do. However, there's no guarantee that Kentucky will come out in the same formation. Again, down courtside, let's go to John Ferguson. The uh, Tennessee people are talking about the clock still, and of course they're getting their strategy ready for the high breaker here, if that is to be in the last 12 seconds. And I can't see all the way down, but the uh, conversation with Joe Hall, who's on his knees among his players, is really intense. As uh, you're looking at Don DeVoe, who's getting himself set in the event Kentucky scores, then he wants his team to have a set offense. Don DeVoe looks like he's anticipating some kind of stack on this side of the floor as Kentucky runs their offense, and he's giving them last-second directions. Kentucky doing one thing different right now. Macy has been taking the ball out of bounds most times. He is on, on the floor. It looks like he may have the ball or do something. Now, Scheidler, again, has been given the job of getting it in, unless they change their minds again. Here we go, 12 seconds in regulation into Macy. Shot. It is short. Macy gets it back. Banks it up. No good. Tapped up underneath by Levon Williams. No good. And timeout with one second. Let's see. Is it over or not? I thought there was one second on the clock. The officials are coming to check it out. I don't know if we're
we're through with the regulation or not. We are. The officials say it's all over. So we are going to the first overtime and actually the second overtime in this tournament. The other night here, a remarkable game, Georgia and Auburn went four overtimes. Yes, and we saw a lot of the same strategy. The two teams holding the ball for the last shot. That time, Kentucky giving the ball to Macy, their bread and butter player. Crosby on him tight all the way. He faked Crosby up a little bit, jumped in. I believe there was some contact. I think the official thought they both might have initiated and didn't call anything. The score at halftime was 44 to 37, Kentucky. We're tied at 55 as we get set for the first overtime period. The officials, Paul Galvin, Don Shea, and Ben Dunn, have worked this ball game, and we end up all even. I might add that Tennessee did a great job defensively. Not only Crosby, but Cowan got that rebound, Jay, inside. Somebody in there we couldn't see knocked the ball out of his hand. He had a good opportunity. John Ferguson at courtside just spoke with one of the officials. John, let's go to you. Uh, Don Shea said that both the coaches thought that there would be time left on the clock, but he was the one who made the uh, determination that time had expired, and that's the way it is. All right, overtime. Kentucky back to their big lineup. Three forwards, two guards, Clater and Macy. It is Vaderber, Williams, Cowan, Macy, and Clater going against Tennessee, who has Reggie Johnson jumping and controlling it. And that's Darden. Also in there is Carter. Underneath, Freitz was fouled. No basket. No basket. The foul is charged to LeVon Williams. It is his fourth. Excellent inside pass by Johnson. He got the ball in the main lane, passed it down low. Cowan with four, Williams with four, Viderber with three. For Tennessee, Johnson, Crosby each have three. Bertelkamp with four sitting on the bench. Chuck Prince puts, Kentucky, puts Tennessee on top by one over Kentucky. 56 to 55. Not a good regular season free throw shooter, only 44%. Air ball that time. So the lead is one for Tennessee. We're in the first overtime period. If you just happen to walk in the house and turn the set on, along with John Ferguson, Jeff Mullins, this is Jay Randolph here in Birmingham. The Southeastern Conference Championship game in overtime. A foul charge. He battled hard, worked. he was the workhorse for the Kentucky team inside. And Cowan, just a sophomore, has a great career ahead of him in Lexington with his Wildcats. Jay Scheidler is up, Coach Joe Hall down below, sending Scheidler in. Kentucky back with their three-guard offense bit of a liability on defense. It's a little bit tougher for him. It looks like Kentucky is lined up man-to-man, -man, though, now. Pass it underneath. And a foul charged on Scheidler. Reggie Johnson scoring. Reggie hit the bucket, and he has a chance for a three-point play that would put Tennessee up by four. 12 points for Reggie Johnson. And they're celebrating on the Tennessee bench but we still have a long, long way to go here. A lot of time left in this ball game. That play is exactly the reason Kentucky wanted to stay in the zone and why Tennessee wanted to try and get him out of him. Johnson's tough to handle inside by himself. Tennessee has its biggest lead in the ball game. Kentucky led by as many as eight early in the first half. 
4.41 to play, and the Wildcats are in deep trouble down four. We're in overtime. Kyle Macy. Truman Plater. He's going to try and hold the ball or at least look for a good shot. Kentucky in a man-to-man. They need the ball back. The Wildcats. Boy, they've got to be tired. Four rugged games in four nights and now stretched into overtime against the Volunteers. 59-55, Tennessee in overtime. 3.50 to play. Shot put up by Carter, a foul. It didn't go down for him. He's getting up slowly. He's all right, though. Good pass inside by Tennessee to Carter. Kentucky gambling. That's what you're vulnerable to. Bederber did a good job, though, saving a layup. The foul is on Bederber, the pre-dental student, the freshman, his fourth. And now Howard Wood is going to come into the lineup for Tennessee. We haven't seen Wood much in this ball game. Leach will come out. 14 points for threes. Oh, for Carter, excuse me. Leach has 10 points. Here is Carter. 60 to 55. Kentucky down by five. Could be down by six. lead in the game for Tennessee. Long pass, Clater. Clater drives and missed the man. Kentucky's basketball. Joe Hall is beside himself. That would have been a big bucket, I need to tell you. Yes, it was. That was a designed out-of-bounds play. Clater broke down three, laid it up a little hard, but he didn't give up. Walked back in bounds, knocked the ball out of bounds. Kentucky ball. Later to put it in play. A disappointed look on his face into Macy. Macy's shot is up, no good, there's a foul. Foul charge to Howard Wood. Good follow up by Verderber. Kentucky's gotta send their men to the board. Kyle Macy looking a little tired. He's played a lot of minutes, but he's still fighting gamely. It will be Verderber who goes to the free throw line. Kentucky 15 out of 17 at the stripe in this game. And they need two free throws right now. But Derber, just a freshman. Oh, what a bright career ahead of this young man. He certainly has. He's a great fundamental player, and as the Kentucky coach has said, he's a good pressure player. He's been in high school tournaments all his life. He's been there before. before it made its decision. Well, that's what you call good backspin. That spin kept it on the rim, went in the basket. And cuts it down to 61-57 with 3.40 to play. Tennessee by four. Crosby, out the dark. The Kentucky fans thought there should have been a charge as Scheidler went down. Tennessee folks rooting it up. Later going in. Foul charged on Plater, the charging foul. And we've had a lot of them in this ballgame. That time Plater thought he saw an opening, went in there a little bit out of control, shot the ball up too hard, called for the offensive foul. The Wildcats, who have clawed and scratched their way into this championship game, may see it all slipping away from them here. 
Reggie Johnson will go to the free throw line. LeVon Williams coming back in for Kentucky. Reggie Johnson with 13 points. Tennessee with a six point lead. for Kentucky to spring Macy, which they were trying to do, is pick on the weak side, getting Crosby off him. That time, Verderber set the pick. Crosby ran over him. He has two free throws. And that's four on Crosby. Verderber, who made one out of two his last trip, on the one and one. A big miss. 65 to 59, Tennessee. 25 to go. A foul on Clayton. Bertle Camp is back into the game for Tennessee, number 10. We've got Bertle Camp along with Wood, Reggie Johnson, Carter, and Crosby. Free throws becoming very, very important in the closing minutes of this game. got it down. 15 points for him. 67-59, eight-point lead Tennessee, their biggest lead in the ball game. Kentucky led by eight early. Truman Clater banks it up and in. Nice shooting by Clater. Kentucky won't quit. No, oh, and they need to score quickly. That time Clater taking advantage of the opening and sticking it in. Tennessee leading. The Volunteers trying to win their fourth Southeastern Conference title. Shackler down to Bedurber. Up and in. And we are back to a four-point game. 148 remaining to be played in overtime. Time out here. Kentucky and Tennessee going at it. We'll be back with more as the Southeastern Conference Tournament continues. 67-63. 148 to play. Joe B. Hall, the 50-year-old better at Kentucky. It's young Joe Dean there with him. Dick Parsons and Leonard Hamilton and his staff. Losing Dwight Anderson last night with the broken left wrist. It hurt. Kentucky has never stopped trying, never stopped clawing. Into the ball game now, Dwayne Casey, number 20, the senior. A minute and 48 to play. Tennessee will put it in play. Now we're in overtime. With Dwayne Casey in there, Kentucky has a four-guard defense. They want their quickness out there. And a foul charged against Casey. 140 remaining. Final score, Atlantic Coast Conference, North Carolina 71, Duke 63, rah, rah, Carolina. No, you don't like that. <laughs> no comment. No comment. Dwayne Casey coming out, Bederber back in for Kentucky. Joe Hall using Dwayne Casey to play defense, maybe take the foul when they have to do it because he's a first player. Carter, now with 17 points. Still plenty of time left in this ball game. A minute 40 to go. 18 points for Carter, 69-63. Six-point lead, Tennessee. Truman Plater. Rebound, Howard Wood. 125 to go. Tennessee.
defender there. Yes, they did. Good weak side recovery. Great pass by Reggie Johnson. Verderber trying to get over there, get in the way of the offensive player. Nothing was called. Both players go down. 18 points now for Carter, 71 to 63. Jeff, that's eight points. A minute and 16 to play. Tennessee, the Volunteers really in the driver's seat. Yes, they are. Not only do they have the lead, they've got the clock on their side with only a minute to go. Carter is up, but Erber is up. This has been an physically tiring experience for both of these clubs and of course especially for the Wildcats who had to play the two extra games here to get to the finals. Four in a row Kyle Macy playing 114 minutes up until tonight. Just an example of how many minutes they played in the last four. Here is Macy. The Wildcats have to hurry. Macy puts it on the way. Great shooter. Timeout with 105 left. 71-65, Tennessee. That was a very big bucket there by Macy. If he doesn't get that one down, they, they've just about lost all hope. That's right, and when he gets set like that, that time he was open, he'd use the pick. He's a great shooter. Jeff, I want to say what a distinct pleasure it has been to work with you, our great crew from TPC and all the gang here. This has just been a great joy for all of us who've had an opportunity to be here as this tournament has been renewed after 27 years. And I think we're going to see it for a long, long time. It's I've been got something that, else. I've got that feeling, Jay. It's been my pleasure to be here, too. And it's, it's really been interesting to see the growth and the interest of the fans. First day, a little, a great deal of interest, but not that real bubbling. Each day it grew. Each day more fans came into the area. And now the final game and a great crowd. They rolled in here in the rain from Kentucky and Tennessee all day, didn't they? They were arriving at the hotel all day, and we still have a ball game here with a minute and five to go. Tennessee up by six with the ball. Joe Hall's troops still in the huddle. Tennessee coming out on the floor. We are in overtime. Tennessee leading 71-65. It was Kentucky 44-37 at half. At the end of regulation time, 55 all. Ready for the inbounds play. The Volunteers leading it. They have the basketball. Long pass to Wood. Can't handle it. Turnover and no time off the clock. That's right. That was a design play, a stack. But Tennessee doesn't need that now. All they need is the ball. They got the clock. I'm surprised they tried it. The, the pass was overthrown. Kentucky ball out under their basket. No time expired. Truman Clater to put it in. Scheidler to Clater from 20. Ball out of bounds. Tennessee's ball. That's Clater's shot. He had a good look at the basket from the corner. Again, fatigue. It's tough to shoot when those legs get a little tired, but they're still fighting. Jump ball. Look out, look out. We've had great sportsmanship on both sides. It wouldn't be marred just because they're shoving and going out there right now. Great hustle by both players and the officials. Boy, when those guys hit the floor, the two officials were in there calling the jump ball. Kentucky doing a great job trapping that time. The city of Birmingham and this marvelous Civic Center providing the scene for this renewal of the Southeastern Conference Championship. Jump ball, Macy against Bertelkamp. Double teaming it. Dwayne Casey reaching in, trying to get the ball called for the foul. The long walk down to the line to the right. Kentucky with two chances. Clater's miss and then the jump ball, and they weren't able to convert. And each possession is so important now. But Erber into the lineup for Casey. Joe Hall making that change. Terry Crosby, the senior. He's been tough in the clutch. One and one. Off the back of the iron. Stolen away. 
Reggie Johnson had it, lost it. Here comes Macy, down to Minerver, up and in. 42 seconds left, it's a four point game. Timeout Kentucky. Great. With 41 seconds remaining in overtime. We'll be back with more after this word from your local station. Mullins, Jay Randolph, Birmingham, Alabama. 41 seconds remaining in the first overtime period. Tennessee leading Kentucky 71 to 67. Casey has come back into the lineup for Kentucky. I think Kentucky just took its last time out. Well, they've used the clock very effectively in the closing minutes here. They still need possession of that ball. The ruling was that Carter was out of bounds. Now, Maderber will come back in. You see him, number 34, Don DeVoe did not like that call. No, there were a couple calls right there at the end. Looked like Kentucky might have had to tie up on the original throw-in with five seconds. It looked like Tennessee took a long time. Then they got a break on the next call. Casey putting it down to Plater. Tapped away, out of bounds by Carter. It belongs to Kentucky. 37 seconds left. Tennessee by four, 71 to 67. Joe Hall directing his troops. He can't call a timeout. He'd like to, but he's directing his troops, trying to get him to set up a certain play. Scheidler out to Clayton. Double dribble! Double dribble! What a big turnover that was. Clayton went to his left, started to pick the dribble up, slipped out of his hands. Graveling call. Casey is back in for Kentucky. Joe, Joe Hall using his timeouts, the substitutions, using the change of play for substitutions. Kentucky will get it. 30 seconds remaining. Driver to Macy. Macy from 30. Rebounded by Wood. 20 seconds left. Out it comes to Crosby. Crosby down to Wood. Foul on Macy. 15 seconds left. Kentucky's had a number of opportunities due to their hustling defense to get back in it. They just can't get the ball to drop. Tennessee a little careless with the ball in the closing minutes. But Herber back in to replace Casey. Howard Wood on the line. He has four points. Wood is a 76.8% free throw shooter. A one and one. That'll do it. That's the big, big free throw for Tennessee. Gets them up to the odd point. They lead by five. And it is 73-67. Tennessee. Later. Banking it up. 73-69. Cap. He's fouled with two seconds left. Tennessee is going to be the Southeast Conference representative in the NCAA. They win their fourth Southeastern Conference tournament. And a great tribute to Don DeVoe and the volunteers from Knoxville. That was a great effort by the Tennessee team. They came in here with some rest, but also playing two teams that had a lot of momentum. Excellent coaching job. It's got to be a dream for him in his first year. And I wouldn't know what to say about Kentucky, except it has been a tremendous way for the national champions defending to go out. They never quit. They were undermanned, worn out, but wonderful. They've shown about as much courage as any team I've ever seen. As you say, undermanned, key player hurt. They've had to make changes. Only eight scholarship players on the bench, but they've hustled every minute. They've done themselves very proud. Bertle Camp. 74-69. Tennessee. Seventy-five sixty-nine. It's all over. The volunteers of Tennessee have won the first renewal of the Southeast Conference Basketball Tournament. The first renewal in 27 years.